Welcome to our tablet quick start guide. This is Jason Seacrest and what we're going to be doing in this series and on this page is we're going to be pretty much walking you through all my favorite settings, all of my favorite tools, tips, options, and then how to use your tablet along with Adobe Illustrator. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to get pretty much everything set up on your tablet and this one is going to be a little bit more of just kind of a quick start meaning we're not going to necessarily do all of the express keys or set up necessarily everything. What I really want to do in this tutorial is give you some options, some things to think about, and then I also want to do a little bit of troubleshooting so you can recognize what is a tablet issue and then what would be an Adobe Illustrator issue. So that's kind of the focus on this tutorial. My kind of game plan and a little bit of a thought process on why we won't set up everything immediately is usually I like having you guys go through test things out, see what tools you're going to actually use, uh, especially since if you're going to be plugging in express keys or anything like that, number one, we need to create some new keyboard shortcuts. Number two, some of you have limited amount of space, so you can't necessarily plug everything in and then actually go through and use it. So I usually like having people kind of see what they like to use, figure things out, and then they can start modifying from there. But as we're going through this, I'm going to let you know what some things you can do uh, and some things to think about. So let's do this. I have already installed my tablet. Everything is up and running. So kind of troubleshooting right away is just make sure that you have installed your tablet. Make sure you have followed all the instructions. So I do not work for any tablet company. I don't, I'm not an affiliate for any tablet company. So I have not memorized all of the instructions uh, for every tablet on the market. So that is not my role right now. So make sure you just follow along to your manufacturer's instructions. Uh, and at this point in time, if you just open up your tablet properties, what you're just looking to do is if I just press down on my tablet, as long as I have pressure and I can kind of do my little scribble right now, and it's, it's reading, that means for the most part, it's, it's up and running. So I, by the time you pretty much download the driver and you have your properties in front of you, by the time I can press down, then you're pretty much good to go. So that's kind of the, the good little test to make sure that everything is up and running on your tablet. So what we wanna do now is just kind of go through what some things are, especially in the, the quick side of what we can be doing for a pressure test, what some of my little settings are here, and some things that just to be kind of a, just aware of as you're going through. So this is gonna be almost moving into some quick setups and then some little bit of troubleshooting as well. So notice up at the top for, for device, on um, all of my tutorials, I'm gonna use the most budget friendly version possible. So as an instructor, I don't ever assume people have thousands of dollars to throw at a tablet. So my tablet is like 80 bucks on Amazon. So it is at a much cheaper price point and that's so everybody can participate. If you have a more expensive one or a display one, all that's going to do is instead of having a weird blind contour type of a feel, you get to look down at your screen. So that, that's really the only major difference. Now, what we wanna be doing here is we're gonna be going through the, the grip pen. And right now for the application, I have this set for all. You could potentially have one for just Illustrator and another one for just your Scratch program or Photoshop. So you can be branching this out if your settings are a little bit different. My personal settings are different from Illustrator to going over to a Sketch program. So I will point that out as we go. So let's go through the grip pen first. I think that one's kind of the, the fun one. And let's do some of the, the real easy ones first. So uh, whenever we're doing this, this is a, a pretty old kind of uh, display, if you will, or just the, the, the dialogue box. Most of the, sh the, the wording should be pretty similar. So you don't have to be hunting. The, the locations might be a little bit different. I guarantee all of your dialogue boxes are gonna be fancier than mine. So unless you're dealing with a tablet that's older than 15 years, I have a feeling your dialog box is going to look much nicer. So <laughs> that's what you get to look at. So for the mapping, this one how, is how easy this is. All I'm gonna do is click on default and now we are done with that one. So that one is a really, really easy one. Just notice that I have my orientation to landscape, the mode is pen, and then pretty much the only thing that I will always recommend is just having both of those full and or have both of them the same. So I think that it gets way com more confusing if you start kind of modifying or cropping either one of those. So just leave that one alone. Now for the eraser, typically you will have something that will say erase. 
Now the erase, if I just use it for the normal eraser, if I'm so notice I am in Illustrator, we will need that open for a quick second. So if you want to start opening that up so you can kind of see the, the difference, that is going to relate to our normal eraser tool. So if you are going to be dealing with the blob brush, if you're normally drawing with shapes, that is going to be what it is going to be pulling from. Now, if you want to start, this is where I'm gonna start brainstorming with you guys. If you are using the pencil tool or the paintbrush, we have another eraser tool. So you might want to be thinking about, hey, what tool am I using as we're going through this tutorial, as we're starting to do all of these practices, you might wanna be thinking about that to instead of just saying erase, we might do a keyboard shortcut and then add that on. So be aware that there is a second video for where we go through all of that. Uh, I have mine turned off for right now. So I have mine as a disabled, pretty much on my end, just so there's no buzz kill, is I have everything turned off on my tablet and on my pen. So at no point in time do I ever want there to be an excuse on your end being like, well, Jason has this big souped up tablet or he's got his all, <laughs> all fancy with all of these express keys. Nope, every single thing is turned off. I don't ever want you to think that that's a thing. I have a 15 year old tablet and that's it. Everything else is turned off. So now I wanna get rid of all the excuses. You guys can absolutely participate on all of the tutorials and all of the workflows using whatever tablet you have. And the, the fancier you are have, the better. Or it really doesn't even matter to be honest. So uh, that is kind of my thought process on it. You might wanna leave this alone. So remember that the default for here is just erase. You could leave that alone. So I don't typically flip my pen over Ever when I'm drawing, I don't necessarily do that, but if you feel like that's gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to do, you can do an erase. Now, another good little thing to point out is notice if I come over here, I have all of these little short keys and keyboard shortcuts. While I am doing this, I will just point this out that if I come over to keyboard shortcuts, I have my kind of keyboard set as Jason right now. If we went to Illustrator defaults, and then we came on back, more than likely you're gonna notice that we don't have any keyboard shortcuts for all of these really cool little tools over here for, for specifically that you should be using with your tablet. So in the fourth video, that is what we're gonna be doing and plugging those, those actually in. So for the eraser, just leave it as erase for right now, but I just wanna kinda of plant the seed that there are two options. So just depending on how you wanna be erasing or when you are editing in the process, it might be a live kind of a eraser and or it might be an expanded path. So depending on when you're editing, uh, you might want to pick and choose. So most of the tutorials that we're doing and most of my workflow, I usually am erasing an expanded line. So a normal eraser will work out just fine. So let's do the pen. I think that was a little bit more of the, the fun one. Now let's do a couple different things. We're gonna do a little bit of a pressure test. Before we do that, we might wanna just do a little bit of troubleshooting. So notice our little pen and our little clicks. I have mine disabled. Just in case you guys are looking for just some kind of fun ones to do potentially right now. If you just clicked on default, you would have a right click and then you would also have a double click. So what I wanna just point out is there's two areas right now for double click. So notice that there's one on the, the actual pen itself, and then there's another one that says tip double click distance. And so that's kinda of usually in the middle. And you can turn why they have it default like that is potentially if you're like hatching. So let me just, if so if I'm doing this type of a movement on my tablet, so some of you could kinda of picture if I'm shading, if I'm doing hatching, if I'm doing cross hatching, at a certain point, that sounds pretty, that <laughs> sounds like a double click. So you can go, hey, I know I'm gonna be doing quite a bit with a, you know, kind of a hatching or my, my pen strokes are gonna be probably pretty close together or potentially, and so I might turn that off. So if you're doing a little bit of troubleshoot and things to be paying attention to is if you're ever noticing it double clicking and it double clicks to isolate, that would be a good signal that this setting on your tablet is too close together. So if I am, or it's too, too far apart. So if one of them, it's, it's gonna be actually reading. So if I just do this, and notice I'm in Adobe Illustrator. If I come down to File New, I'm just gonna do a five inch by five inch. I'm gonna click on Create. All we're doing is a pressure test. So I'm, I did just breeze over that. Just click on, just click on any, basically click on any file. 
because all we're going to do is hide the artboard and so now we have a big giant white space. So that is really all I'm looking for uh, when we do our little pressure test right now. But under preferences, notice that there is also a double click to isolate. So I can modify if it is going into isolation mode a lot while I'm drawing, I can turn that off. So if you're brand new to Illustrator, just be aware that that double click to isolate, that's for grouping. That's what it's referring to. So you can usually double click to get inside of groups. So while you're drawing, you're usually not grouping anyway. So it's really not going to affect the drawing process really at all. If at any point you want to say, hey, I want to turn that back on, then you could actually do that. So I will usually keep this on for double click to isolate. But then again, just pay attention to I also have my double click distance turned off. Other thing I just want to actually point out since you can't see it on my screen is I do have my mouse. So I turn off the double click distance. I am going to turn off this one because I have my mouse right over here. So all I'm going to do is turn this another nice little click. You could see what's in here, but a keystroke that's kind of fun is if you just do your control Z. So that's like your undo button then I could say that would be probably a good, pretty good little start. So if you did right click, keystroke, and then you'd go from there. So those would be the two that I might put over here. Again, everyone's preference is a little bit different. Let's just set mine back up. I have disabled, I have disabled, and then we are ready to go. So you just, well, I'm gonna point it out every time. Every single thing on mine is disabled. So if I come over to customize, let's start doing a little bit of a pressure test. So there's going to be two things that we're going to be looking to do. I want to see one, if I am getting pressure in here, then the tablet's working. So that's actually the, the easiest one. So everything after this, if I can do this and I can get some nice little, little pressure, that means it is an illustrator issue. So I want you to be able to distinguish the, each one. So a lot of the times when people are, are drawing, if you're doing this and you're not getting any pressure, then obviously there's an issue with the tablet. The, the, more than likely the driver hasn't been installed, something like that. So that would be a great indication that, hey, I need to come back and actually do the, the install for the tablet. But if you can do this, now we can need to do a little bit of a pressure test on uh, Adobe Illustrator. So here are my little personal preferences and you can always play around with it, see what you like. I usually like mine a little bit firmer when it comes to Adobe Illustrator. I don't, I think anytime it gets a little bit soft, I do think it gets a little bit more bumpy. It gets extremely hard to control, especially if you're using pressure. So if I ever, I'll do a pressure test with it really, really soft, or even just some of the defaults over here. And you can kind of see how it's gonna play out, but it's it almost gets really hard to control your your pressure and just the quality of your line if it gets too soft. So all I need to do is click on my functions and this is gonna be a little bit of a buzz kill since I have, and everyone's gonna be a little bit different, but just notice that on my touch strips, I have those disabled. Uh, everyone just kind of take a look at what type of tablet you have right now. And this, so this is gonna be a me doing, just making sure I'm covering all the bases no matter what type of tablet you have. And especially with the express keys, here are my two cents. If you have a tablet that looks like mine, so it is a non-display tablet, your hand will never be on the tablet for express keys or touch strips anyway. It will always be on your, your pen and or your keyboard. So you're gonna be following along to me and for the most part, you're gonna just disable everything. Some of you are gonna be like, what the heck is a touch strip? It is the dumbest thing of all time. <laughs> I don't like it at all. So there is potential that they got rid of uh, the touch strips. So I have that disabled. That thing typically is, so let's say, notice I have a right and a left. So if I have this touch strip, what this is doing is it is literally going right under my drawing hand and it's just gonna keep moving my artboard every single time I'm trying to draw and it gets highly irritating very, very quickly. So just make sure that, that is all off. If we're doing express keys, notice I have a left and a right. You wouldn't need any of them or both of them anyway. So anything that would be happening underneath your drawing hand uh, you would want that whole side turned off anyway. Now, a couple different things, depending on the size of your tablet or just if you have a keyboard, I do always recommend having a keyboard. So I use my keyboard shortcuts well, 10 times more. I'll rephrase that 100 times more than I would do anything where I would try and recommend having your hand on the tablet itself. 
The major one is if you're starting to move into a larger tablet and it's starting to get bigger, 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 typically what's happening is your keyboard is getting farther and farther away or you have to do this like weird reach around in order to get to your keyboard. So either one, you wanna be looking at a USB type of a keyboard. Uh, so if I do a touch workspace, which we'll cover, I usually will have a external keyboard since I lose the, the um, I actually lose my keyboard on mine. I would actually just have a USB version and then I would still use my keyboard shortcuts. So uh, there's definitely a limited amount of the, the express keys anyway. So you don't wanna sit there and think, oh, I'm gonna have 100% of all of my buttons and all of my tools on an express key or something like that anyway. And that's a little bit more, not towards the uh, non-display, that's a little bit more towards if you have a Cintiq or something like that, you're gonna probably notice that you don't have that many options anyway. So just be aware of that. Now for express keys and anything dealing with our keystrokes and our keyboard shortcuts, be aware that we have to go through, we're gonna practice everything. We have to go in and actually change them up. And then at that point, we can come back through and then you can start plugging and chugging them in. But some of these are gonna be like your black arrow, your white arrow. Now you're gonna start picking what tablet tool you're gonna to be looking to use. Next, you're gonna be trying to figure out which one of your support tools you are gonna need some keyboard shortcuts for. So I want you to do this right now, just kind of look down at your tablet, and this is for anyone that has a Cintiq or a display tablet. I want you to count how many buttons you have so you know how many options you have as we're going through all of the tutorials. So again, we're not trying to shove everything in there. Like that would be crazy. So like all you would need to do is if I'm using the pencil tool, I'm gonna plug in the pencil and then what are my support tools for the pencil? Like I don't necessarily need to plug in every single thing just so I have it. I'm just gonna be plugging in the ones that I'm gonna be using. And that's kind of my thought process and even just my keyboard shortcut process in general. Like I don't sit there and think, I don't teach people you need to know 50 keyboard shortcuts. You need 15, like which ones are you gonna be using? Those are gonna be the ones that you're gonna be trying to, to learn the, the fastest or as you're going through all the workflows. So for this, let's just end it. I think most of this is going to be solved as we're going through it. So let's just move on and then we'll start talking a little bit more about the pencil tool.